All righty, the Bandung Conference. The Bandung Conference is going to take place April 18th through April 24th, 1955 in Bandung, Indonesia. It's going to be organized by Mao Zedong. Now, Mao Zedong is the leader of the People's Republic of China, which became independent in 1949. Now, he's going to for, or call this conference because he's going to believe that the anti-colonial nationalism that was already spreading throughout Asia, particularly in French Indochina, is going to be spreading into Africa. And remember, with the age of imperialism in the 1800s, uh, we've got European countries with the white man's burden coming down and really trying to colonize pretty much all of Africa in the race for Africa. Uh, now, he believes that these countries are going to have their own nationalism uh, and try to get rid of their colonial rule, and he believes it's going to spread to Africa. He also believes that he is the natural leader of this new nationalism, this anti-colonialism, because he's already led a revolution like this in China. So Mao is trying to kind of take the reins right here and put himself in a good power position, uh, as we already know from um, talking about authoritarianism, how Mao is going to be uh, when it comes to that kind of stuff. Uh, so Mao believes anti-colonial nationalism is going to spread to Africa and that he is the natural ruler. Now, this is going to be a meeting of African states and Asian nations. And there are many new independent African states taking part in this. There already is some uh, breakaway from the colonial past in Africa, and these states are going to be taking part in this conference. Now, the goal of the conference was to expand Afro-Asian economic and cultural cooperation. So for African countries and Asian countries to continue and expand their ability to work together and to ultimately oppose colonization. That is something they do not want at all. Uh, is also going to help lead to the creation of the non-aligned movement, which we will talk about just a little bit later on. Now, China and India both want to claim the leadership role of this conference. Now, this you can obviously see, it's going to naturally set up for somewhat of a clash. This also puts the United States in an incredibly, incredibly awkward position because uh, per the US, they always have had the policy of supporting independence movements within countries. Uh, so they really want to support this independence movements of these countries, but by doing so, they also risk alienating their European allies because the independence movement is really going away from their Euro European allies. If, for example, French Indochina, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, uh, the United States and France are allies, but the United States also kind of naturally wants them to be independent. Uh, they also fear that the conference is going to lead to an increase in China's power, something the United States particularly does not want because China is communist. Also, we have the United States Secretary of State, John Foster Dulles, who's urging the United States to simply ignore the conference. Pretend it does not happen uh, because you're kind of darned if you do, darned if you don't in this one if you're the United States. So just ignore it. Pretend that it is not happening. Instead, the United States is going to issue public statements on the conference where they're agreeing to give economic assistance to these countries. And the main reason why this why this is happening is they fear that if they don't, China will be doing this. They don't want the, these countries to be really getting close with China. And if China doesn't do it, then the Eastern Bloc and the Soviets will do it. And they really don't want them getting close to the Soviets. So it's kind of like, let's just get here before they do and make sure that this does not spread. Again, this is an example of the Truman Doctrine in action. Any country that has a far possibility of turning communist, the United States is going to intervene. And that's exactly what we're going to be seeing right here with these public statements as a result of the conference. Now, the conference is going to result in a declaration. Okay? This 10-point declaration is going to be based upon the UN Charter. Uh, number one, they're going to discuss the respect for fundamental human rights and purposes and principles within the Charter of the United Nations. So basically, make sure human rights are taken care of within these countries. Make sure you're following the direction of the United Nations General Charter. Respect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all nations. So don't be going on these expansionist claims. Um, stick with the sovereignty and territorial uh, basis of individual country. Recognize the equality of all races. Do not have race wars going on within your country and the equality of all nations, large and small. So large countries have just as much power as a small country. Okay, so for example, Egypt can't be going and bossing around uh, Yemen, for example. Okay, make sure you have equality between all nations, large and small. Abstentation from intervention or interference in the international affairs of others, okay, the internal affairs of others. So basically, let's just let what happens in one country stay in one country. Don't be go getting involved in this country. Now, understand um, these countries that are a part of this conference are formerly colonized countries. So they had an outside country interfering in their internal affairs. They know why this is not beneficial. They don't want this. So they're going to try to set it up to make sure that they're not doing the same thing down the road. Okay? Additionally, the respect for each nation to defend itself, either singularly or collectively, um, within conformity of the United Nations Charter. So you have to be in line with the UN Charter. Um, but they can kind of do whatever they want to defend themselves, whether it's with a 
collective alliance or individually. They're going to um, abstain from the use of arrangements of collective defense to serve any particular interest of the big powers. So we're not going to be getting along uh, in these different alliances just to benefit the United States or just to benefit the Soviet Union or just one of these big countries. Okay, we're going to do it for what's best for your individual country. Abstain from any country that is exerting pressure on other countries. So if one country is trying to kind of power another country into doing something, we're going to stay back. Okay, an example of this could be the Soviet Union with what's going on in Hungary, the Soviet Union with what's going on in Albania. Um, different stuff like this. Okay, trying to exert pressure on other Refrain from acts of threats or aggression or the use of force against territorial integrity or political independence of any country. So basically, let's just not be going and uh, being really aggressive and talking about possible war against a country when it comes to their territorial integrity and their independence politically. Let them be themselves. Uh, settle all international disputes by peaceful means. So we're going to avoid war. Um, again, in, in, in alliance with the UN Charter, avoid conflict at all. Cost, promotion of mutual interest and cooperations, work together where you can, and if you can't, go about a peaceful means to solve the problem, and respect for justice and international obligations. So if you are a part of the UN, which virtually every country is, follow what's going on within the UN, follow international organizations and obligations to make sure you are following the rules. Questions, comments, put it down below. Otherwise, good luck.